All right, guys. Today I'll be reviewing SeaWorld Orlando um, in Orlando, Florida. Kind of obvious, but yeah, this is actually a park that really surprised me. So we're going to get into everything about this park in this video. So obviously we'll start in with first impressions. When you're coming up to here, you can see it from all the roads surrounding it. You can see Mako, Kraken, every, everything really. And yeah, it's really cool coming up to this park. You park in a pretty normal parking lot and get a great view of Pipeline. And the main entrance is actually pretty small, which I kind of like. And, you know, it's got like a quaint sort of feel to it. It's, I don't really know how to describe it. It's not this big grand entrance that a lot of parks these days have. But yeah, it I really like it. It's really small, but again, it's something you don't see every day, so I like it. So when you walk in... You're going to see all your basic stuff, gift shops, info, whatever. And you get this grand view of like the SeaWorld Orlando sign and Manta in the background. And yeah, it's just a really nice first impression. So let's go over the ride lineup here because that's why most people go here, I'd say. So for your headliner, you've got the world's most underrated coaster, Pipeline the Surf Coaster. And wow. This ride, I already put up a separate review, but it truly shocked me. This is in my top 10 overall. Like, I know I'm usually pretty recency biased, but it's been almost a month, and I still think this is over rides like Maverick and Pantheon. It's it's truly that good. Watch my review if you want to know everything about that. But it's truly a fantastic ride. After this, at least in my opinion, the lineup really takes a hit with Mako being the second best, and quite frankly, you go from the most underrated coaster to a contender for the most overrated. I don't know, Mako, it's not even in my top 50. I get it, it's nice and graceful, but it definitely doesn't have any power to it. The second half's a dud, like overall, I don't, I don't know, Mako just didn't do it for me. After that, you've got Kraken, which is a really good B&M floorless. I think I have it one over Dominator for me. I get it, Dominator has airtime, but this definitely has a really complete layout, but at the end of the, end of the day, it's a B&M floorless. Like, it's not, it's nothing too crazy. After that, you've got Manta. This is another one like Mako that I realize it has, It it's not catering to me. I'm not a big flyer fan because... I don't know, even the pretzel loops definitely are pretty graceful for me, and the rest of it is really graceful, which, for me, I just want violence on a coaster, so, yeah, Manta doesn't really do it for me, it's barely in my top 100, but, you know, I could see how some people really like this thing, and after that, you've got Icebreaker, which, I thought, I thought this was so overrated, the ops were bad on this, which I'll get to ops later, but, yeah, the ops didn't help, but yeah, the ride itself, I didn't feel like it packed much of a punch. Definitely was a family coaster. I thought it could have been like Wacky Taxi, but oh well. You've got Journey to Atlantis, which is a really cool water coaster. Great theming in there. Kind of feels like if Escape from Pompeii had a water coaster portion. So yeah, I really like this ride. And then obviously Grover's is... um. Yeah, it's Grover's. <laughs> don't re don't really need to explain that one much more. It's a kitty coaster, but yeah. Overall, looking at this ride lineup, other than Pipeline, it sounds kind of underwhelming the way I'm describing it. But again, I realize that Mako and Manta could be way higher for most people because not everyone wants a ride that just tries to kill you the whole time. And yeah, <laughs> pipeline's that good that I could carry this to being a really good coaster lineup and you've also got infinity falls i didn't do it but yeah apparently that's one of the best raft rides out there you got a couple other little non-coasters but nothing too much but let's get into what really impressed me about this park and that's the atmosphere i thought this was going to be a pretty average atmosphere especially coming from bush gardens tampa which look out for a review on that next but yeah, coming from that, I didn't think this would have that strong of an atmosphere, but I was shocked when I saw that this place had almost as good of an atmosphere as Busch Gardens Williamsburg. It's really something special. 
the whole area by pipeline is one of my favorite areas in any park period like this genuinely might be my favorite area in florida this whole pipeline plaza i don't know there's something about it that's so nice and the bridge connecting like the front of the park to over to icebreaker that's just such a nice place to get shots and uh yeah just take in everything it's it's so great being over the water there and you've got obviously all the areas just look so nice like mako's is obviously really nice i'd say the rides here they're more decorated than themed obviously atlantis is an except is an exception but you know that kind of has to be themed to be good but yeah even kraken and mako like they're all decorated really well I especially like Mako with, like, the shipwreck and everything in the area. Oh, man, that, that looks so cool. You've got just all this nice... All the pathways are even nice. I don't even know how else to, to describe it. They're just clean, not a ton of litter on the ground and everything. Yeah, it's really, it's really weird to describe atmosphere for any park, but, yeah, I'd say here it, it just doesn't make sense, but it's really nice, and I think... I think actually a big part of that might be the animals, which I know in other parks like Marine Land, Marine Land, I like the atmosphere just because it feels like you're going to die the whole time. But yeah, other than that, like, I don't know, the atmosphere at Marine Land really doesn't do a whole lot because of the animals. Like they don't add a whole lot, I mean, but they definitely add a bit to here. I feel like you just walk by and you see a bunch of flamingos barking or whatever you see sea lions or dolphins and yeah it's just really nice seeing all these animals just on the pathways and i mean they're obviously on their way out for obvious reasons but you know it's it's something it, it adds to it it doesn't feel depressing like at marine land and yeah again just the palm trees and everything in the area makes this atmosphere one of the best of any park in my opinion so now that we're done with that, let's talk about some food. I only had one meal because, yeah, usually I try not to eat at all. But, um, yeah, nine hours, um, kind of had to eat something because um, my family made me. But, yeah, what I had was okay. It was, like, chicken and fries. And I think I had, yeah, I think that was it. I might have had a pretzel, too, with that. But, you know whatever it was, it, it was fine. It wasn't anything special. So yeah, overall pretty forgettable food, obviously, if I don't even remember what the third thing I had was, but yeah, it, it's fine. Just get food if you absolutely need to, but overall, if you can make it 10 hours without food, go for it. So yeah, it's weird why I like this park so much, you know? The ride lineup, other than Pipeline, is pretty underwhelming in my opinion. Like, food isn't great. There's not a lot of live entertainment when you're walking by or streetmosphere. Other than in Sesame Street, and that's like, yeah, cool, great, Grover's doing a handstand or whatever. I don't even know. But, yeah, it's, I don't know. I think the combination of how weirdly good the atmosphere is... And obviously, Pipeline being the most underrated coaster I've ever ridden, just those two combined makes this park really good, in my opinion. I don't know. I didn't think I'd like this, like it this much, especially if I knew how weak the coaster collection was going to be besides Pipeline. But yeah, it's that good that I can carry this park. Um, plus, again, all the animals and everything you could see walking around. It's truly a great park. I had a nine-hour day here, and I got in 14 rides on Pipeline, seven on Mako, um, two on Kraken, two on Manta, and one on Icebreaker, Grover, and Atlantis. We didn't have fast... Tra okay, that that is something I definitely need to go over. The fast pass system here is garbage. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know if it was just this day, but like this wasn't even just bad that it was frustrating. This was just so bad it was comical to look at um for icebreaker especially they didn't even have a grouper it was just a, it was just a fight to get into the queue line um to see who would get in and actually to get on icebreaker because that was the only 
line over 15 minutes I had to wait in, and that was like 50 minutes. But yeah, there was the front row was empty. The front row was empty. And just people were fighting to get in. No one could see the front row was empty. So I just squeezed my way through and got in. Like, I don't even know what to say about that. That's just, like, that's something you can't even be that mad at. That's just ridiculous that that exists. I'd say Pipeline had the second week of stops. I know it can run two trains, but it was only on one. And I think actually UCF, a school I'm looking into, um, might have had like a tour there or something, and maybe they were using a train for that. I don't really know all the details, but I heard something about a college going there for some sort of tour, so I figure it might have been the theme park management program for that. But yeah, one train on Pipeline wasn't great, but they still did a good job pumping out those trains, so it was either a walk-on or 15 minutes max for that, and then everything else was an absolute walk-on. Not even just because the lines were small, like, they still did a good job pumping out trains. It was still, like, one-minute ops for Mako, like, decent ops for the rest of them. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what you get for having four, now soon-to-be five B&Ms in the park. And I'll say Penguin Trek is definitely coming along from what I saw. I know it's, like, probably going to test any day at this point. I don't even know. But, yeah, I, I saw it. Pretty, It's pretty much done. And it's probably even further along now. I haven't really been following it because, again, um, yeah, I've got better things to follow than a B&M family coaster. But I think it'll probably be a solid sixth place in the park when it opens. Maybe, maybe seventh. I don't know. Atlantis was actually pretty solid, I'd say. So overall, I'm not, I'm not even going to rate parks at this point because I realized it's hard to give like a solid ranking out of a thousand for amusement parks. So I'll just say where I rank this park overall in my park rankings right now. This park ranks number 11 currently for me, which, um, given another park I went to uh, in Florida, I did not think it would be able to rank that high. But, you know, it pulled through. It surprised me. It definitely did. I didn't think it would, especially given the weak ride lineup besides Pipeline. But, yeah, Pipeline and the atmosphere are good enough to carry it. And combine that with some pretty good ops, and yeah, it just makes for a great day. So that's my review of SeaWorld Orlando. Let me know what you guys think of this place down in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.